Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So, I bought a car and I'm really, really excited about it. It's kind of odd that I'm still excited about it when it's been like three months since I've bought it. So I ended up purchasing a 2018 Honda Civic, the EX trim. If you know about the trims, the LX is the base model, the EX is the trim right above that. So you get the sunroof, you get like the cute rims, you get the like very large touchscreen center console. Almost got the EXT trim, I'll tell you about that later, but I got the EX. And yes, I bought secondhand. I did not buy it new. Never buy cars new off the lot. They devalue so much. If you're looking for a car right now and you're wondering if like this is the car for you, try and find it used, which it's three years old. So you shouldn't have any issue with that. I'm not really gonna be going into like the financial aspect in this video. If that's something of interest to you, like if you're looking to buy a car, let me know. I can definitely make another video about it, but Today, I'm just gonna be showing you her and why I love her. I'm outside the car now and I want to show you guys some safety features that really sold me on this car. The driver and passenger doors have this type of handle. I have my key in my pocket here. I'm not going to take the key out. I'm not going to press the unlock button on the key. I'm just going to put my hand on the inside of the door and it unlocks the car. I really love this feature because if you're alone and you don't want all of the doors to unlock, it only unlocks the front door. So I can't get in in any other door. And to lock it, you're just going to press the button. And it's locked. Now we're on the passenger side, and as you can see, there's no like keyhole to unlock the door from this side, but there is still the button to lock the car. If you use the hands-free unlock feature with the passenger door, it unlocks every door in your car. So if you only want one door to open, you'd need to go from the driver's side, but that's a little thing I had to find out on my own. And your passenger side mirror actually has this little projection here. I don't know if you can tell, but that is a camera. So every time you turn your right blinker on, you can see to the right of you. That feature is absent on the left side, but the left side is closest to you. So it should be the side that you could see the easiest. These headlights are always on. You can never turn them off. They're daytime like running LEDs. They're on even though I have it set to the off switch in my car, they never turn off. What you just heard right now was another safety feature. So if your car is on or even the battery's on, and you leave with the key in your pocket, it's gonna beep and let you know that you're dumb and you need to go back inside. Here's the key. And with this key, you can remote start it. So I'm gonna lock the car and then I'm gonna hold this down for five seconds. So if you leave like your heater on when you turn your car off and it's the winter time when you remote start it from your house, it'll warm up your car. On the back of your key, there's a little button that if you slide this, your mechanical key pops out. So if your automatic like unlock feature doesn't work, you can just use this guy to get in. If you wanna pump gas, you would normally just press this, but the car is locked, so it's not gonna open. So first I unlock the car and now it opens. It is capless, so you don't have to unscrew anything to pump gas. You literally just put the nozzle in there and then pull it out when you're done. And to close it, you just press it in. Okay guys, we're inside the car now and I turned off the air conditioning so you could actually hear what the car sounds like when it's just idle. This sound that you're hearing is characteristic of a Honda Civic. So it's not completely silent. When I was looking for this car, I test drove brand new 2021 Civics as well as 2018 like this one and 2019 I believe and they all had the same characteristic sound. I'm gonna show you the cabin now 
and what's arguably the best features of this car. As you can see, the inside is tan with black stripes. I don't love this. I was actually looking for black or gray interior just because I felt like it looked better and it didn't show stains as much, which you will see some stains in this car. I did buy it secondhand. It was a rental car before, so it has some scuffs, it has some bangs. The seats are a little bit discolored like near the buckles, but nothing that like a good power wash will get out. When I got this car, it was around 22,000 miles. Now I'm at just over 25,000 and I've had it for four months. Considering what I paid for, I got a really good deal. On your steering wheel, on the left side, you have your driver's control. This is the volume. And when I was looking at videos for this car online, I made the mistake of thinking that this was a dial. You cannot just slide it to change the volume. You have to physically press it up and down and you'll see in the middle where that changes. This guy is your information button. So if I press that, some menu options will pop up. So that's gas, maintenance, music, phone, and that's if you want nothing shown on the screen. I always keep it on the gas, whoops because I wanna know how much gas I have left. So it tells you your range and it tells you your average fuel economy. It also tells you the temperature and the time. I really wanted an electronic display like this. It can show you real time what your speed is instead of you guessing on a gauge. Left of that is the temperature gauge for your engine as well as the red indicator that shows I'm not wearing a seatbelt. And on the right is your gas. So I actually went to Costco gas yesterday and I filled her up. So she is nice and bright blue. On the right side, you just have your standard cruise control settings. I did not get the premium package for this car where you can have like lane watch assist. It was actually really weird test driving that on the newer Civic because if I started to go out of my lane, it jolted the steering wheel. I felt like I was not in control of the vehicle. So that was something I did not want. I never use these three buttons because I have Apple CarPlay, so I don't have a need to use them. This one is just to pick up the phone, to hang it up, and then to do voice commands. All these features are like very easily on my screen. As you can see, it's plugged in currently to my Spotify, but if I press this button, then you can see all my apps. Okay, I turned the car off and into accessory mode because it was just getting too loud. On the left, you have your audio on and off power, your home button to access the other features of your car, not through Apple CarPlay, volume, and actually this slides up and down. So this one does slide and you can mute it there also. If you press your menu button, it'll just show you all your options. So you have Pandora, Apple CarPlay, Bluetooth, FM, AM radio, Sirius XM, etc. You can swipe on the screen back and forth to look at your other apps. I'm not going to go to the leftmost screen because it'll show you my address and my route home, but it'll automatically map things like that for you. Right below that is your climate control center. This right here is your on and off power button. So it's on now and once it's on, this dial here will show you the temperature up and down. This button right here is to keep the air circulating just inside the car. If you have the air on, you'll probably wanna use this so outside air doesn't readily come in. If you have your windows down or if you just want some fresh air circulation, it'll bring in air from the outside as well. And then you have your front and your rear defrosters. I keep my phone just in this center console here because it actually has room for your core to feed through. It goes in via a USB. And on the right side, you have your standard like cigarette plug where you can plug in extra outlets. Right here, you have your electronic gear shift. I really love this car because it has a sport mode. That's the S on there. And it's just very sleek and minimal in my opinion. On the right side, you have your econ mode. So if you press this button, it'll actually stretch your gas out further. So if you're low on gas, press this. One thing to note, it will also turn down your air conditioning and like use of other non-essential accessories. On the left side, you have your brake hold and your electronic parking brake. This is pretty straightforward. You just put your foot on the brake and hold it up to set it and then put your foot on the brake and press it down to release it. The brake hold is a really interesting feature that really, really sold me on this car. If you're in stop and go traffic or if you're in a drive through and you don't wanna keep your foot on the brake, press the brake hold once you're at zero miles per hour and it will hold the brake for you. That way you don't have to keep your feet on 
the break you can kind of relax a little bit i would not recommend using it if you're not in like stop and go traffic or a drive-through situation because it's kind of jarring when you're trying to slowly scoot forward or something like if you're coming out of a driveway and your car won't move at all that's just my opinion i wouldn't use it if i wasn't in those two situations and then in the center you have your center console that is a little beat up to be honest again it's a used car it's not going to be perfect if i pull this up i have some extra storage here right now there's just my extra battery that's dead on the right side you have a bunch of extra storage down there and if you scoot this down you can see an extra cup holder. Arguably the most exciting feature of this car and something I told myself I would not go without, I had to have this feature, the sunroof. She's closed right now, but to open her, I would just push this forward and it takes back the covering as well. To close her, I just press this button forward. As you can see, she's tinted compared to my other windows. Which is nice because if I just want to see what's above me, you know, just have a little little bit of sunlight, it's not as harsh as what would come through my side windows. If you want to tilt her open a little bit, just press the button up. And she tilts like that. To close it, you would do the same thing as if it was fully open, you would just press it forward. And it closes. This does not close with it, you have to close this manually, but to open it, it would open automatically. Hello there. How are you? On both the driver and passenger vanities, they're lighted like this, which I think is nice. There's also a light back here for your backseat passengers. On the driver's side, you have your front two automatic windows. So if I pressed it down, it would go automatically all the way down. And if I pulled it up, it would automatically come all the way up. Then you have your window lock. So no one can open their windows except for me and your lock and unlock buttons. This guy is just to change the position of the side mirror, so I change it to left, and I can move it electronically. To keep it from moving, I just press it in the middle. The seats in this car are not automatic. I did not get the upgraded automatic seats. This is standard with the EX trim, so if you want automatic seats, if that's important to you, this car won't have it in this trim, but honestly, I'm the only one that drives my car. It's in my name. So I didn't really see the value of getting automatic seats. On the inside of the door, you have your abundance of napkins as well as your trunk button. And this is the trunk space. It's not completely empty, but I think you can see how spacious it is the trunk is not automatic when you go to open it it literally just pops like an inch and then you have to physically lift it so that's a little bit annoying but other than that you're getting a lot of space back here i have the characteristic like civic mat in here if you pull this up and you pull the like felt up you have your spare tire and your kit. If you're purchasing a car secondhand, make sure this is in your car. Make sure that nothing is missing and that everything that should be in here is in here. As I mentioned before, there were some not so perfect things about this car. With the tan seats, this like black has actually rubbed off on the seat. And honestly, it's gotten worse with time. It wasn't this bad when I first bought the car, but now it's really, really dark and I'm really gonna need to shampoo that out before it gets any worse. I never sit in the back seat, but I'm back here to show you just how spacious it is. I'm 5'7 and I still have a lot of room above my head back here. I'll probably never sit back here again, but you know, just to show you. There's no air conditioners in the back here, but you do have cup holders. I'm gonna go inside because I can no longer survive having the air conditioner off while talking to you. So thank you for watching. I hope that this helped you if you're thinking about purchasing this car. Hopefully I showed you some things that you didn't know and that you couldn't find elsewhere. But yeah, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.